Hello book chums. We're in Book Corner today, that's because we're going to review a book. This one is by Suzanne Haywood, who was formerly called Suzanne Cook, and it's called Wave Walker. It's about her experience, her childhood, from the age of 7 to 17, when she was essentially on a ship travelling around the world. So, this is an interesting read. It's obviously non-fiction, it's biographic, but it's also She's taken a lot of accounts from different people who were on the boat, uh, some of them her parents. So the idea, the premise is that she was taken out of school at the age of seven and taken on a, a boat which her parents traded in their house for this boat. And uh, they were going to teach them because both of the parents are teachers and take them around the world following Captain Cook's third um, voyage. Um, I think that was the one where you get to D, wasn't it? Yep. And, um, that was the idea, that that was what they were going to do as a family and it was only supposed to be for a few years but they ended up being out there for 10 years and as you can imagine it's a very tricky uh, place to be out at sea when you're trying to learn everything that you would in a school curriculum you know to um, educate yourself as a child um, and it's about her struggles with her parents as well because it's not saying that they're bad parents or anything and I don't think that's what the book is about I think it's saying the limitations, talking about the limitations and the stresses of being on a boat and also just generally parents do their own thing as well and that's not always the best for the child um, at least in the context of education and if not in the context of friendships and uh, relationships that they develop are pretty limited out on a boat as well so there's a lot of interesting stuff happens in this and it's I don't know. Looking at it now, and I've been, I've done a bit of sailing. I've done, um, I know a fair bit about the sea and about what kind of conditions you get out there. And I've seen small boats going like up and down on heavy, heavy waves. Would I take a seven-year-old child and her brother as well? He was younger. I think he's a year younger. At that age, out to sea. I'd probably wait until they're in their early 20s, they've had a chance to decide for themselves and make the decision to come. I wouldn't have done it that way because it's a serious journey and it's a dangerous journey, especially the way they did it because they went the wrong way. They, they, didn't, they went eastwards essentially and a lot of the decisions get made by the father but also the mother as well. But mainly the father with regards to the voyage and where they're going to go. And part of it they're kind of treating as their own kind of holiday. And it's not that they're neglecting the kids, because they do involve the kids in some of the decision making, but a lot of the decisions you can just see are just not going to work, and it's not very fair on, on the child, and it's mainly from Suzanne's perspective really, it's not from her brother's, I mean she does talk about what goes on on boats, it's a, it's a boat, it's small, it's got only a number of cabins, also they take on crew members as well, which... Um, they need to do because otherwise you've got two adults um, as the main kind of ad well the adult sailors the kids are helping out a little bit but there's limitations uh, you talk about a 10 year period as well and they want to increasingly do their own thing as kids do especially in the, the teenage years and they're constantly railing against the parents in this really small environment which is why it's a difficult one to read at times uh, and I found it interesting both from a perspective of how you sail around the world and what kind of conditions you meet and there is a cataclysmic condition that occurrence that occur that happens and it's basically seems to me it's the captain the the father makes the wrong decision and a confused wave situation where if you don't know a confused swell is you've got two swells I mean waves I mean one of them's a swell wave and one of them's a wind wave if you know what that means if you don't know it means google it wind wave is a wave still getting generated by the the, the wind a swell wave is a perhaps recently generated wave but one that's um, no longer being generated by the wave because the wave, uh, I'm not going to go into that but basically they're against each other so if you're a boat trying to sail um, in the conditions out at sea generally you want, your, you want to be orientated into the wave not perpendicular to the wave so the wave's hitting you on the side basically and going to roll you, smash you, turn you or even break on top of you where you, you can get extreme waves that break on, not even extreme waves actually big waves, let's just say that because extreme waves is something different it's like one in a thousand wave or it's more than one in a thousand wave because that's your max wave 
So one of the thousand is what is often described as an extreme wave. But extreme wave means certain conditions. But anyway, they can smash on the top and break the break the, the ship in two, and it sinks rapidly. Yes. So bearing that in mind, you have these heavy seas, and that's the, what what occurred. And it seems like one of the waves that there was coming up from the um, from the side smashed into the side of the boat and plowed into it and they were taken on water. It somehow, somehow they survived. I'm really not sure. I think there's a bit of luck involved there and it just shows the kind of irresponsibility involved in taking the kids out into that but also taking your boat in that particular stretch of water. I mean this is a big boat by the way. It's is it 70 foot. Um, it's a long boat. It's not a small one. It's a two master. So I'll just show you the plan of it there. If you can see that, do, do, do. it's quite a big boat. You've got like a living area, you've got a cabin, cabin. There's a few cabins, um, but it's a big boat. It's a big boat, but it's it's not big compared to the sea, basically. And if you're sailing that, you need to be ready for it. You need to sail the right route. Even then, it can go wrong and you can get lost at sea. It can happen with any boats. If you There's a boat website that you can search for boats and they get lost every day daily you'll lose a boat, it'll just disappear and sometimes you just don't get to find out why. So bearing in mind those conditions and the way her father is very direct, he's very, he seems angry at times but it's basically his way or the highway and at the points where he will actually maroon people who, are, who have paid to be on board the ship and their luggage on an island and just sail away. So it's absolute lunacy thinking, how the hell do they survive on these islands when they get marooned? Um, but I assume it's a populated island, but maybe it's not. I don't know <laughs> what the hell is going on. But Suzanne, or Sue, as she gets called as a little girl, in the book, it's very well written and it's easy, to, super, super easy to read. But you just can't believe some of the decisions get, that get made, but made by the father, but also the, the parents generally, because it's the, it's the parents' rule. And they, they will have a, a slight democracy where they get to vote on things. But the captain's, it's, the captain always has a final say, even if they vote against it. He still goes, yeah, I'm going to do it anyway. Or if, the, if it's 50-50, because there's four people who vote, then he'll always go with what he wants. So, it's a very good read. It's an essential read. And it's interesting, she's done really well, well, I don't know, she's done really well educationally, because she went to university on the back of this. She did all her education, schooling work, out at sea. And she posted it at mailboxes on islands and then got her results on the islands that were posted out to her. Um, it was all around Australia at that point. So it's an amazing book on it in extremes uh, of childhood. And her brother doesn't seem to have been educated as well. I don't know. He doesn't really go into it exactly how he's come out of it um, and his experience and as his experience as an adult. But he does talk about Suzanne's experience as an adult, which I think is a fair way to do it. Uh, unless her brother was going to input, which he probably hasn't. Um, it's all about her kind of perspective, but also with the perspective of other people who contributed voluntarily. And it's really interesting to hear what happened to Wave Walker in the end. Because she spent 10 years out at sea with this family, just sailing around the whole freaking world. You're talking about Hawaii or Hawaii. Um, um, down to the, the, they got, got down to Australia, New Zealand all around the world and of course the smuggling as well that her father was smuggling goods around he was doing all sorts of dodgy behavior out at night so it's a really interesting book if you're, you've ever been interested in sailing it's well worth it for that reason it's well worth it from every perspective it's just a thoroughly interesting read and probably the best non-fiction book of 2024 so far and this is a, a recent book that's been released so yeah it's a good one read it <laughs> Five out of five experience, it goes without saying. Loved it, well written, brilliant book. Go and get it. Or get it from your library as I did. Um, but either way, read it, no matter how you read your books. Thank you for watching. Have a most excellent day. Drop me your sailing comments in uh, the comments below as well. Oh yeah, drop a like as well if you enjoyed this. Thank you.